Good morning. If you would, please be turning in your Bibles to John chapter 3. We continue with our series of lessons that we started uh, last week. Our lesson this morning will be coming from John chapter 3, verses 1 through 21. Believe in Jesus and live. I would encourage you, if you can, uh, these lessons would be great for uh, inviting your friends to come who haven't known much about Christ and understanding what it takes to become a Christian. For most of us, this is just a reminder, some things that we need to think about and make sure that we are striving to live by faith and to grow uh, in our knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I don't think that I'm alone when, uh, when I've really been in places where I didn't want somebody to see me. You know, you, you go places and sometimes they're places that you don't you don't want to be seen. Uh, I think about going shopping uh, with Janice or my granddaughters. And you end up, if you're in Macy's, they need to go to the restroom. You end up standing in the middle of the women's lingerie department. You know, sometimes you're standing there looking around I sometimes wonder what people are thinking about this old coot standing around in the middle of this department. What about his character, what he's doing standing here? And then if you do get drug into one of those stores that has the word called secret in it, you get left standing in there and your granddaughters are wandering around. You really hope that somebody doesn't see you, particularly my hunting buddies or somebody like that. You know, you really, now, if I run into you after I'm already in the store, I kind of think that that's okay because, you know, you're there also, so I won't hurt you, you won't hurt me. But I'm sure that there are places, I'm not a woman, but I'm sure that there are places that women uh, don't like to be seen or they're kind of worried about where they are. You, you know, in talking about this type of thing and the, some of the things that kind of upset us from time to time. If you look at this particular chapter that we're looking at today, it's about a man, a character in the Bible who I like to call him Nick. His real name, though, is Nicodemus. And if you begin looking at these scriptures, we read about Nicodemus in the Bible, in John chapter 3, and in a few other places. And though the Bible, we see Nick change if you really look at this character, let me tell you just a little bit about him. He is a Pharisee. Uh, this means that he has the right credentials. He has the right credentials to be a Jewish leader. Uh, he has the right family heritage. Only Jews with verifiable 100% Jewish lineage could be considered for such a prestigious and important position. But lineage and ancestry were not enough. There had to be a little bit more. In addition to the right family, he had to have the right education. This means that he had spent years in the study of God's word. He had also uh, studied about the law and he had been taught hour after hour about the law of Moses. Uh, he was mentored by powerful men in the Jewish religious system. And Nick passed the test with flying colors. You see, in addition to being a Pharisee, his wisdom, his knowledge, his understanding of scripture, 
his ability to read and interpret the law caused him to be elevated in the Jewish system because he had all the right requirements because a member of the highest Jewish ruling authority, the Sanhedrin. The great Sanhedrin was the Supreme Court of the Israel nation. It was made up of 70 men, both Pharisees and Sadducees and the high priests. And they were the only ones, they were the only ones who could try the king or extend the boundaries of the temple in Jerusalem, a very powerful group. And they were the ones to whom all questions of law were finally put. In common terms, they had the final say on matters of Jewish law. Being a member of the Sanhedrin, that was a big deal. You know, it was a great honor. Its members were respected. In a lot of cases, the members were loved in some cases, they were feared. Someone holding such a position at this would be very aware. They would be very aware of where they went and where they were seen. This is where we come to this morning. If you've opened your Bibles to chapter 3, we're going to continue with our study in the book of John and his purpose for writing that book. And we're going to take a little bit different uh, look and a better look at one of the most read scriptures and quoted scriptures in the Bible, of course, John 3.16. But if you would follow with me as I read, and I'll be reading from uh, a uh, easy-to-read version, John chapter 3, verses 1 through 21. There was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader, who was a Pharisee. After dark one evening, he came to speak with Jesus. Rabbi, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean? exclaimed Nicodemus. How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again the wind blows wherever it wants, just as you can hear the wind but can't tell where it comes from or where it is going. So you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. How are these, how are these things possible, Nicodemus asked. Jesus replied, You are a respected Jewish teacher, and yet you don't understand these things? I assure you, we tell you what we know and have seen, and yet you won't believe our testimony. But if you don't believe me when I tell you about earthly things, how can you possibly believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ever gone to heaven and returned, but the Son of Man come down from heaven. And as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on the pole in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. For this, how God loved the world, he gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him would not perish, but have eternal life. God sent his Son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. Then there is no judgment against anyone who believes in him, but anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only Son. And the judgment is based on this fact, 
God's light came into the world, but people loved the darkness more than the light, for their actions were evil. All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it for fear their sins will be exposed. But those who do what is right come to the light so others can see that they are doing what God wants. I want us to take just a few minutes, and I won't keep you long, just to look at these passages of Scripture more on a one-to-one -one basis. We'll mix several verses together, but go back to the top of that chapter and look at verses 1 and 2. There was a man named Nicodemus, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. After dark, one evening, he came to speak with Jesus. You know, old Nick did not want to take a chance on being seen. He wanted to take a chance on being seen. I think this would have been uh, way worse than Buddy seeing me in a girly underwear store, but being seen going to Jesus could have very well mean uh, the loss of everything that he had worked for and accomplished in his life but he went anyway and in my mind i i tend to see him looking around you know to make sure that there's that there's no one following or watching maybe he even pulls his hat down a little closer over his eyes and pulls his shirt collar up staying in the shadows but still he went he went to see Jesus. You see, Nick had heard about Christ. He had heard about him, and what he had heard intrigued him. He heard how John, the famous preacher, had thrown his support to Christ. He had undoubtedly heard about people uh, dropping what they were doing and beginning to follow after Christ, leaving their jobs and their old uh, ways of lies behind. I have no doubt that he heard about the water to wine miracle. He probably did. And one of the most troubling things he heard was about Jesus clearing the temple. I have no doubt that Nick knew some of what was going on at the temple was wrong. You know, this, this is one reason that he was coming to see Christ. I don't think he was involved in the corruption on a personal level. But he sure went along with it. He went along with it. Nick had gone along with a lot of wrongdoing by the Jewish religious system. And I think it bothered him just a bit. But more than that, he heard how Jesus taught in the temple with authority. This means that he explained God's that he explained God's word in simple terms where people could understand it. And this baffled this Jewish leader. This baffled Nick. How did this simple nobody teach with this knowledge? So Nick concluded that Jesus must be sent by God as a teacher, as a prophet. I have no doubt that he was ready, uh, that he was not ready. He was not ready for what Jesus was fixing to tell him. Nick called Jesus rabbi. He called him rabbi, a sign of respect and of honor. He complimented Jesus on his miracles. He praised him for his teaching. He honored him. But I bet you, old Nick, you know, it, it kind of threw him back just a little bit because if you look at this, Jesus didn't return those compliments. Don't get me wrong. I don't believe that Christ was rude or disrespectful. But he simply cut to the chase. He said, I'm not going to waste any time. I'm going to get right to it. You see, he knew. He knew what Nick wanted to ask even though Nick himself wasn't even sure why he was there. So in verse 3 Jesus told him the answer to a question that he had not even asked yet. 
look at verse 3. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. This set Nick back a couple of steps. He did not or he could not understand what Jesus meant. Being born again is common term today in this world, but this was not something that he could grasp. He thought he understood the kingdom. He knew it would be set back up on earth and that it would be ruled by God. But he thought that this only applied to the Jews. That God's chosen people would be included in it. Jesus is telling him that being born a Jew has no bearing whatsoever on being a part of the kingdom. That heaven depended on acceptance of God's one and only son. The Messiah what was standing there, who was standing there talking to him. So he asked in verse 4, What do you mean? exclaimed Nicodemus. How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Nick could not get this picture in his mind about the rebirth. He did not understand that Jesus was talking about spiritual birth, not uh, physical birth. So Jesus lays it out for him, verses 5 through 8. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. Rebirth, but a spiritual rebirth. Baptism is important. It is a condition of salvation and an act of obedience. Back to Nick. He can't wrap his brain around this. I am sure that his head was really kind of swimming around at this point. Everything that he had been taught is being turned over. In verse, so in verse 9, he asked, Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? He said, I don't get it, Jesus. I don't understand it. How can this even be possible? This is not what I have been taught. You got to remember now, go back to what Jesus did not return the compliments and the praise that Nicodemus gave him in the opening verses when Nick kind of fluffed him a little bit there. But he was not due or he was not rude or disrespectful. Christ was not uh, in his reply. He said, Nick, I can, hear a bit, I can hear a bit of sharpness in Christ's words right here. Look at verses 10 through 12. Jesus replied, you are respected, Jewish teacher, and you don't understand these things? I assure you, we tell you what you know, what we know and have seen and yet you won't believe our testimony but if you don't believe when I believe me when I tell you about earthly things how can you possibly believe if I tell you about heavenly things Christ in a way is saying man you know what you're supposed to be the smartest of the smarts you're supposed to be the religious elite, well educated, well read. Nick, how can you not see? He's kind of berating him right here. How can you not understand? How have you not studied the prophecies? 
How do you expect to understand the spiritual things that I tell you when you do not get the earthly or the worldly ones? Open your eyes, Nick, is really what he's saying. Open your heart. Jesus is hard on him just a bit here, but he goes on to explain. Look at verses 13 through 15. No one has ever gone to heaven and returned, but the Son of Man has come down from heaven. And as Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him will have eternal life. Jesus is telling Nicodemus right here, hey, you know what? I am the one that the prophecies were about, that were written about. I am the Messiah. I am the promised one. And these, did Jesus explain to Nick just what that means? In doing so, he gives us the most well-known, the most loved, and the most quoted verse in the entire Bible. In these simple words, Jesus makes it simple. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. God loved. God gave. We believe, we confess his name, and are baptized for the remission of sins, we then have life eternal if we strive to live a Christian life and remain obedient to him. We live, it really is that simple. Believe in Jesus and live. But then he continues with just an important but less known part of this passage. Verse 17. God sent his son into the world not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. Jesus says, I came to give mercy and love, not to condemn. Jesus fulfilled the law, completed the law. He came to deliver us from ourselves and from our sins. He came to deliver us from the penalty of the law. If you remember, the law was set up and it had the word that you had to keep the law. That meant that you had to keep all, every single bit of it. But now he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seeking is different than keeping because then mercy and grace comes in. Verse 18, there is no judgment against anyone who believes in him. Now, that's the first part of verse 18. What this means is simple terms is that when you believe in Christ, when you accept him by confessing his name and are buried in baptism for the remission of sins, you are found guiltless in God's eyes. But you know, we're all, we're all not guiltless. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. But we no longer need to fear the punishment, the punishment that we really deserve. If you are a baptized believer in Jesus here this morning, this verse should give you great comfort, should be wonderful news to your ears. Verse 18, the second half of that verse says, though, but anyone... But anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only Son. If you are a non-baptized believer here this morning, this verse should really scare the britches off of you. Should give you something to think about. What Jesus tells us is there is one choice. There is one choice if you want to live. One choice if you want to live. Not two choices. There are always two choices. You can accept him or you can reject him. But if you want to truly live, there is only one choice. Choose Jesus and live. 
choose anything else, anyone else, and you die. Not a physical death. We will all die unless Jesus returns first. But spiritual death, separation for eternity from God. Being separated and having no contact with God at all. Verses 19 through 21. And the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world, but people loved the darkness more than the light. For their actions were evil. And all who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it for fear that their sins will be exposed. But those who do what is right come to the light so others can see that they, that they are doing what God wants. Nicodemus came at night. He tried to hide but he did see the light. Scripture doesn't give us the details about his conversion. I believe he heard Jesus' word and left Jesus that night changed. These words that have reached so many, so many like Nicodemus through the years, the gospel has the power to save. We know from reading about him later that he, defend, he defended Jesus. He defended Jesus against the guys that he once hoped would not see him go to Christ. And that after Jesus' crucifixion, he came in full view of the light. He came in the sunlight for the sun, for Jesus Christ. In full view. I think Nick got what Jesus said. I think he got that eternal life was available to him. In spite of his mistakes. I think Nick saw the light. The question is. The question for you and me is. Have we, have you seen the light? The truth through God's word. Also the question, have you made the right choice? Have I made the right choice? Have you been reborn? You know, if you're here this morning and you've never been buried in baptism, you can do that today. And it'd be a good day to do that. Confess his name. Be buried in baptism for the remission of sins. But if you are here and you've done that and you've turned away, Come back because think about what Christ said. If you reject him, you've been judged already. That would be a sad day. Come to Jesus and live. If you have need of the gospel invitation, won't you come? While together we stand and sing.